So you may have heard of the term anosmia, and it's simply the loss of perception of the sense of smell. A, anosmia was a fairly unthought about condition until COVID came along. And interestingly, it was one of the first markers that brought the scientific community to understand where COVID was going. Suddenly there were huge rises in Google searches for loss of sense of smell in new countries like Italy and then England, et cetera. And without being able to test for COVID, there was suddenly an idea that maybe this new virus is related to losing sense of smell and where it had gone. An interesting anecdote now, but one of the first times in science that we've done that. Um, but that COVID is not the only reason why people do sense of smell. In essence, there are two broad categories for losing a sense of smell. One is the smell molecules are simply not getting through the nose to the skull base to get to the olfactory nerve. Oh, and that's what we call a conductive loss of smell. So for example, if you had nasal polyps. And the other broad category of which COVID is one of them is a sensorineural loss of sense of smell where the nerve for smell, the olfactory nerve is no longer working or there's a condition further up towards the brain that's causing the loss of sense of smell. And usually the cause is a virus. Well, the most important thing from an ENT surgeon's perspective is to understand what the cause is. So if it's the former we just discussed, the conductive loss of sense of smell, then often the polyps, which may be causing it, for example, can be reduced with either medication or surgery, therefore allowing the smell molecules to rise through the nose, get to the, olf the, the top of the, the nose, uh, and the smell can return. And of course, the other cause, for example, COVID or other viruses, it's a bit of an unknown entity of when it will come back or if it will come back. Um, there are certain uh, treatments that may help and may expedite things. But in essence, time will tell whether it will come back or not. There are certainly things that we can advise on that may well help. Well, again, it goes back to the cause. So we touched on the treatment for the conductive loss, but to focus in on the what's you know probably the most common cause of sense of smell loss and osmia these days, uh, i.e. COVID, um, there was a working party group in Britain that looked at what might be affected. And uh, omega-3 is one of the supplements that's uh, suggested. Um, vitamin A was not suggested as a definitive a cure for sense of smell and then wasn't advocated. The evidence is, is, is mixed. Um, uh, and MRI, uh, one of the treatments we used to, or the, uh, sorry, investigations that we used to give patients that lost their sense of smell was an MRI to make sure there was nothing uh, more concerning going on in the brain. But actually, if the history is very exact, i.e. they've had COVID, they lost sense of smell straight away, then that's no longer advocated. But the one thing that is very useful, and I would point everyone that's lost their sense of smell to a particular organization, it's called absent, absent.org. And there's lots of excellent information there, including uh, being able to access smell retraining kits. And the process of losing one's sense of smell is working on a nerve receptor uh, level. So in a sense, the nerves have forgotten how to, to put together a sensible uh, dynamic which allows you to smell what you think you smell. So it's not always just a loss of sense of smell. Sometimes you can have something called cacosmia where you're smelling, for example, you smell a rose, but you smell something offensive. Or sometimes you can even smell things that you don't think you should smell. So the, the smell retraining therapy works on about buying into the idea of relearning what smells should smell like. For example, there may be a kit with a clove in it. So we don't just simply sniff the clove, we think of a clove, we think about a situation where you had clove, we think about what it ought to smell like. And by that way, you're recreating the neuronal pathway all the way from the nose through the, the nerve itself and into the brain and into the part of the cortex that's looking after smell, and thereby rebuilding that, that pathway that has been lost. And uh, there's you know, growing evidence that that's very valuable. Um, so by going to this website, buying the, the smell retraining kit, 
Or even if you're just wandering around the house, when you pick up a perfume, when you pick up some apple juice, go through that process. And it requires a lot of buy-in from, from patients, um, but it does work. And it's really empowers the patients and to be able to take things into their own hands. And what can be a devastating injury. And I, you know, I don't underestimate how significant losing one's sense of smell is. Remember 80% of taste is said to be smell. So not being able to taste a nice wine, not be able to smell your newborn baby. These sorts of things can have a profound effect on, on people's lives. So it shouldn't be underestimated. It's, it's sort of been the Cinderella in, in sense, if you like, until now. And I think COVID was always devastating impact, but it has actually brought the importance of anosmia and cacosmia to the, to the front. Well, I think we touched on that a little then, but I mean, I think seeing an ENT surgeon is, uh, is, is useful in that we can get a definitive diagnosis. We need to, you know, they're completely different treatment regimes if it's COVID related or conductive. So, and, you know, still many patients will have a conductive or nasal obstructive cause for loss of sense of smell and that needs to be managed properly. Um, and, you know, the correct treatment can really help with that. Uh, but of course, you know, we, we touched on uh, the management of, uh, of COVID-related loss of sense of smell, and those treatment pathways can be personalised for the individual. And, and you know, also it, talking to a healthcare professional about something that profoundly affects your life can be quite empowering to the patients. So that, that's important too.